How much RAM do you or I actually need for creating content without limits? Today I'm testing how much RAM creative apps like Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and Final Cut Pro use, and how fast my computer runs with 8, 32, or 64 gigabytes of RAM. Hello friends, my name is Tim McStollars, and I recently upgraded my iMac but I had no idea how much RAM to buy through a third party because I left my previous Mac at its base 16 gigabyte RAM configuration. I wanted to know how much RAM creative apps would need to run to their fullest potential without buying too much RAM. Finding the right capacity is a fine balance because buying too little RAM will definitely slow down your computer when pushing its limits, but buying more than your computer will actually use and you end up wasting money for absolutely zero performance boost. It's worth noting, however, that over the years, the cost of third-party RAM for Macs and PCs has significantly decreased, so it's easier more than ever now to get the exact amount of RAM for your needs. I've included links in the description below where you can purchase the same RAM I did for my 2020 iMac and for the PC I built recently. Before we can start the analysis, I just want to mention that although I am completing this analysis for my Mac, these concepts are identical for analyzing PC memory. I also wanted to quickly review how RAM works for those that are not aware. I've included timestamps in the video if you would like to skip ahead. RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and your computer's operating system and every application you use has part of its data stored in memory when in use. This makes it different from storage such as hard drives or solid state drives as information isn't stored there permanently. It's only stored on a short term basis so that information can be accessed very quickly. Creative apps such as photo, video, and audio editing programs can end up using a lot of RAM the longer you work on a project and the bigger the project gets. But every single application, including web pages, take up a little bit more memory and the more apps you are running simultaneously, the more the RAM fills up. Now, if your programs try to access more RAM than you physically have, your computer has to decide which app you are using the least so it can put it in storage and every time you try to reopen the swap program, it is no longer at the computer's fingertips and it has to bring it back into memory from storage while trying to switch another program out. These swaps from RAM to storage is what can slow down your computer significantly and it is why people think you need all the RAM to have a fast computer. Although in a sense this is true because if you don't have enough, your computer does slow down. On the other hand, having too much RAM that your apps never fill just ends up being unused memory that doesn't speed up the general use of your computer. So now that we know how RAM works, it's time to find out how much I need to run my computer without limiting it, but not wasting money on unused RAM. I completed tests with the base 8 gigabyte, then 32, and finally 64 gigabytes of RAM. Using just one program at a time, as well as running multiple apps, and trying to load each one up. As I mentioned earlier, I'm completing this analysis on my Mac, but these parameters I will be analyzing are universal with the PC. Here are the tests I completed with eight gigabytes of RAM. I have 10 photos that I lightly edited and I'm exporting in Adobe Lightroom. The way I interpret this information is I see what main programs I'm running and how much memory each one is using. Lightroom is taking up four gigabytes with a few other minor apps I have open, but you can see it's an extremely long list of programs just related to the operating system. Here you can see how much RAM is being used with compression being the more important indicator. The more your computer has to compress data, the longer your computer will take to complete tasks as it now has to uncompress the information before it can be read directly. And then the last important indicator would be how much data is being swapped. If no data is being swapped or compressed when you have a lot of RAM, the more program information your computer has direct access to. The last indicator is memory pressure, which gives you a visual representation of how full your memory is. But this isn't my favorite indicator for performance, as I'll explain shortly. Next, the main program I have open is Photoshop, and I took this screen grab at the end of a slightly more intense editing session when compared to the Lightroom example, but really not doing anything too fancy. You can see Photoshop is using 8.4 gigabytes, the memory pressure is pushing fuller and into orange, and we have quite a bit more data being compressed and swapped out. At this point, doing even minor tasks, such as opening up web pages has slowed. Pushing it further, I opened up Lightroom alongside Photoshop, and my computer speed has been significantly reduced. My main apps collectively are trying to use 21.5 gigabytes, 3.3 gigabytes is compressed, and 10 gigabytes swapped. 
You can see this dip from higher memory pressure to green, which I believe is coming from memory being swapped out. This is why I don't focus too much on this gauge. I think it only shows how full the memory is itself and does not take into account how much information has been swapped or compressed. Even at green memory pressure, the computer's performance has been slowed. And finally, for the last test, I'm trying to run all my main creative apps at the same time. Lightroom, Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, and even screen recording all at once. And as you would expect, the computer is performing at a fraction of its total speed. My main apps are collectively trying to use 29 gigabytes with only one gigabyte compressed, but 17.34 gigabytes swapped out. The pressure gauge is green, but the computer is very slow. To summarize, eight gigabytes really isn't enough to be creating content efficiently. All your apps will be slowed regardless of how fast your machine is. And I think it's okay for light editing and surfing the web, but I think even for this type of computer use, a bump up to at least 16 gigabytes would be beneficial. 32 gigabytes. This is right after I turned on my computer and you can see 8.5 gigabytes of memory is already being used by the operating system. I didn't physically open any documents, but they may have been started to run in the background from startup. Everything is obviously running at full with no information compressed or swapped. I added a little bit more with web pages, Word and a video. Overall, not running anything crazy and it's right up to 13 gigabytes of memory used. This is why I mentioned earlier that eight gigabytes is just simply not enough even for basic tasks. And 16 gigabytes is at the very low end as well. Everything continues to be running smoothly with being nowhere near the memory limit. Here I'm doing a time-lapse in Lightroom. So definitely doing some proper work now. 22.5 gigabytes of RAM is being used with very little compression and nothing swapped. Everything is running just fine, but we are at 70% capacity without having any other major programs open. In this example, I continued to process a time-lapse in Final Cut Pro with a little bit of Photoshop being used and we are at 89% memory capacity. Very little is compressed or swapped and there is no signs of slowdown. Finally, I'm running all my apps again at the same time. Although this indicates there is less RAM used than in the previous test, the pressure gauge is high and there is significantly more memory compressed and data being swapped out. The computer is running much slower than before. To summarize for 32 gigabytes, it without a question gives you significantly more room to play than eight gigabytes. And for the most part should be enough to run one app really well. It does become limiting once you try to have a few more open though. Lastly, let's see how 64 gigabytes does. Here's a Photoshop and Lightroom example with a decent amount of work being completed in both. We have a total of 48 gigabytes of RAM being used with little compression and nothing being swapped out. I'm editing between the two with zero problems and everything is working as quickly as I would like it to. Here's one last Lightroom example. I just completed the edits for a real estate shoot and you can see Lightroom Classic is taking up 35.8 gigabytes, but I believe the kernel task is associated with Lightroom operation as well. So probably at least 40 gigabytes of RAM is being used just for one app. The total usage is 52 gigabytes with some compression, no swap data, and memory pressure being low. I didn't notice any slowdown, but you can see how much memory one app can take, especially at the end of a longer project. If I had anything less than 64 gigabytes, I would likely have noticed a slowdown towards the end of the editing session. For the last and final test, I'm trying to throw everything I can once again to slow down my system. I have a time-lapse that I've edited in Lightroom, and I also opened it up both in Photoshop and Final Cut Pro. Total memory used is 55 gigabytes, and I couldn't seem to get it any higher no matter what I opened or edited. Regardless, this had brought my computer's processing power to a halt. Even though memory pressure is low and there's zero memory swapped, I have 15 gigabytes of compressed memory that is slowing things down. In this example where I'm really trying to fill the memory up, 64 gigabytes is still not enough. So how much RAM do I personally think I need? While 64 gigabytes is probably the sweet spot between going overboard while still giving my system enough room to use these apps freely with very little restriction. As you saw, 64 gigabytes can still be overloaded though, but these situations are not likely going to occur organically too often. And you can always close down an app to give your memory some breathing room. Here's the last screen grab I took right after the last example, but I've closed down Final Cut Pro. Just from that, we dropped 19 gigabytes of active RAM used and reduced our compressed data by 11.3 gigabytes, 
bringing my machine back up to full operation once again. I think 64 gigabytes is more than enough for most people for most situations, but it is definitely possible to overload it. Although RAM costs have reduced significantly, it's still around $300 US for 64 gigabytes and twice that for 128. There are some budget laptops you can get for that, so it's still a sizable expense. Well, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I was able to clear some things up and help you decide on how much RAM you should plan to purchase for your machine. If you enjoyed this video or found this information useful, it would be great if you could leave a like and a comment below. Let me know how much RAM you are using and what kind of apps you are running. Do you have enough RAM or do you wish you had more? Take care and I'll see you in the next video.